Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me today. I'm a little bit injured, but it takes more than a car to stop me from talking to you. Um, <laughs> maybe a tank. <laughs> okay, um, so today I want to talk about the microprinter, about my work, how everything started, um, what was my motivation behind to, to build the smallest 3D print in the world. And let's start with my daily business. So my normal work, working field, is called two-photon polymerization. It sounds very <laughs> nerdy. It is very nerdy. And um, well, what do you need for, for making this stuff? You need a complex laser system, a so-called femtosecond laser system which you focus um, to a very tiny spot, um, very, very, very tiny. And this is a very expensive, not very durable laser system. <laughs> and on the other hand, you need a very complex um, positioning system. We call it Agate. <laughs> and because it's very heavy and I thought Agate is a nice name. <laughs> and um, well, you need this system to move the laser through, through a sample at a very accurate level, about 200 nanometers, so very accurate. And, well, what can you do with that? Well, you can do things that you cannot see with your eyes. So you can print out whatever you want. So you can print out a tower bridge, you can print out Agatha's husband. Um, <laughs> so, okay, but... What's, what's so, um, what makes that so mind-blowing? You maybe notice this um, scale bar, and it's 100 micro microns for the tower bridge and 20 microns for the fat man. And for comparison, the diameter of a human here is around 50 microns. So um, this, these objects are like a dust particle or even smaller. So it's hardly, you can hardly see it. And what you can also do is, and what we are also working on, is um, improving the system, improving the resins, the material we use for uh, catching a worm or something else. Inside the resin, we, we move the laser through, through the resin, it gets polymerized, and we catch up a living animal. Here, here, a special worm. And what we are trying to do, or what the next step would be, to make biocompatible um, polymers and maybe to write some things inside your body or inside the body of a of a worm, or to attach cells to our um, structures and so on. But okay, that's my normal working field. Today, I want to tell the story behind uh, the microprinter. What was my motivation? Um, well, everything started at Monday morning, 6.30. Okay, that's a lie. Maybe it was 10 o'clock. <laughs> when I went to my laser lab, which is located in, at, near Karlsplatz in the Freihaus of the Wiener University of Technology, and I went in and I saw that this laser system was broken, and I tried to fix that. It took me half a day, it took me several hours, and then I noticed, okay, there is a major issue with the pump source. I cannot fix that on myself, so we have to call the service technician. And from that point on, I noticed I have time to think. So I thought, what to do now? Maybe start to write my PhD thesis. <sighs> ah, no, no, not a good idea at all. So I started thinking, maybe write a scientific paper. <sighs> not a good idea at all. And then. On Saturday, after a week <laughs> thinking, I came up with the idea to build the smallest 3D microprinter in the world. And, or the smallest 3D printer in the world. So, so I called my professor and I told him about, hey, let's buy, let's buy the thing and I have time. I said, okay, go ahead, build it. And so I went to the university and from that point on I just put everything out of my brain inside the computer to make this um, CAD construction of the whole stuff. And after a few months, we had the first test run with the, with the system, and it works brilliant from the first test on. And it worked, um, it had the same resolution as systems which cost 60,000 euros, and we only spent 1,500 euros for the system, not including my, <laughs> my, my salary, but that wouldn't add so much on it. So, 
Okay, and um, how does this work? I brought you a video where you can see how you can put in um, your three-dimensional file. And this video was, um, has been produced by a friend of my, mine, Junior Veloso. And you can see um, you have a set stage which moves up and under the set stage there is a liquid which gets solidified by the light. Um, and you slice by slice you, you create the, the model. So it's really, um, yeah, you really put it out of the liquid. And it just depends on how, how big is your model. So maybe you have 100 slices, 1,000 or 10,000 slices. So um, that's how it works. Of course, this is a much bigger machine than the microprinter, but it uses more or less the same principle. So that's what I want to show you. And at the end, the, the, this head, this alien head, is attached to the building platform. And when the process is, is done, you just simply have to um, uh, break the head from, from the support structure you need, and then everything is ready. So, um, okay, but how does the microprinter look like? Well, maybe some of you have already s seen this picture. I also brought it to you in person, so I want to kindly introduce you to the 3D microprinter, which looks like this. So it's, it's very small, so it's really desktop worthy and it's really affordable system. And yeah, we are really proud of it, actually. And, <laughs> and um, okay, you have this tiny little system. If there are bigger ones. What can you do with that, with a cheap, affordable system? For example, um, you can you all know these hearing aids. Um, they have to be um, produced individually for each person. So this is a perfect example for uh, using this technology to create a shell for a hearing aid. And uh, normally you go to the store, they scan your ear, they send the data to Germany via email. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they print it out with a... With a thank you. <laughs> And then they print it out with a big machine, and then when it's ready, they send it back to Vienna, or uh, wherever you are, um, via post, and then they put in the electronic. When you have a microprinter in your store, so you can go to the store, they scan your ear, they just press print, it, the 3D model gets sliced, and you can go for a coffee, you can go to the university, um, whatever you want, and instead of five days, you can have your ear shell or your hearing aid in, in one day, in just one day. And um, that is an example of how these tiny little machines or, or other cheap 3D printer could change our everyday life. So thank you very much, and yeah, start printing whatever you want, whatever you need. <laughs> okay.